My mom has been missing for years. I think I might have found her. Submitted by Dismal Apparition. Eat it. Charlotte pushed Marlena's face closer to the fly-infested dog turd, eat it and be grateful. My daddy saw your daddy at the soup kitchen, so you must be hungry. A cacophony of giggles erupted behind Charlotte. A gaggle of pigtailed, ponytailed, and bob-cutted brats from hell. You're hurting me. Marlena cried, please just let me go. Strands of her flowing brown hair were beginning to touch the droppings. Enough, Charlotte. I shouted, leave her alone, or I'll tell the teacher. Charlotte turned her head toward me in a slow, calculated manner. Oh, look who it is, pee pee boy Carlos. She pointed, her gang bellowing out on cue, did you run out of pants to pee in yet? That was three years ago, we were in second grade. You wanna know what my daddy said about you? She took a step toward me, blonde pigtails bouncing as she moved, he said your mommy didn't just skip town. He said your daddy killed her. Stop it. That's not true. I took a step backward. He said your daddy got mad cause your mommy was sleeping with every man in town. He said that your daddy doesn't even know if you're his kid. Her next step sent me stumbling backward, tripping over Marlena. My skull smacked against the shit covered asphalt. The group roared with laughter, joined by a new voice, Marlena's. Ew. Charlotte giggled, I knew you were full of piss, I guess you're full of shit now too. The crowd went wild. The sudden blare of the school bell caused the herd to break apart and head toward the building, leaving me to tend to my wounds. My ears were still ringing from the knock to my head when I first heard her. Bring her to me. The woman's voice turned my blood into ice. It was a low, guttural whisper, echoing from the tunnel at the far end of the playground 50 yards away. I pushed myself up and turned toward my collar. She was wiry. So thin that it looked as if a weak gust of wind would snap her in half. Her skin was gray and sagged as if it was about to fall off. With her right hand, she beckoned toward me once more. Her voice sounded like it was emanating from all around me. Bring her to me. I wanted to run away, but my legs betrayed me. My feet were glued to the ground. Tears began to flow down my face. Just as she was about to speak again, my bladder released. Carlos. I turned, snapped out of the trance by my teacher's sharp voice. Recess is over. Get over here now. My goodness, did you wet yourself again? I'm going to have to call your father. The class clapped and laughed from the window as if I'd given them some sort of encore. We can't keep doing this. My father kept his eyes on the road as he spoke. Dad, it was an accident. I saw Soam. I know it was an accident, boy, but you can't keep having them. You'll be starting middle school next year. I know, Dad. I didn't mean to. I saw some. No one ever means to mess their pants. You just need to go to the bathroom more often. Sometimes you have to go, even if it doesn't feel like it. Do you understand? Dad, I'm trying to tell you that I... Understand? Yes, Dad. I understand. It was still early in the afternoon when we got home. My dad had to go back to work, so I was left alone. I took a quick shower, hopped on my bicycle, and rode back toward the tunnel. I wasn't sure who the woman was but something inside me was burning to go back and see her. I parked my bike on the side of the tunnel opposite the school. It was a large empty field with a few trees. No one was around except for a couple of teenagers throwing water balloons at cars. Hello? I used my hands as a makeshift megaphone from 10 yards away, is anyone there? The dark, skeletal figure began crawling down the tunnel, bouncing side to side. The woman's bony, gray elbows juttered out toward the walls. Her knees were locked straight forcing her into a misshapen, triangle-like figure. She was giggling and humming as she wriggled forward. A sudden wave of chills poured over me, covering my body in goose flesh. I moved backward, away from the tunnel. The woman seemed incensed by this and began moving faster. She started making a noise that sounded like she was rapidly licking and smacking her cracked, rotting lips. I turned to run but was immediately pushed to the floor. What are you looking for, your mommy? It was one of the teenagers, wearing a red shirt. You gotta get out of here, I pushed myself up in desperation, before you get hurt. Is that a threat, twerp? He shoved me down again, even harder, my sister has a class with this kid. She said he pees his pants all the time. His sidekick snickered at the same time she spoke. Bring them to me. It sounded like she was inhaling as she called. Please. I yelled, can't you hear her? We have to go. The only thing I hear is a little boy about to pee his pants. 
I stood up once more and was immediately dropped by a punch to the gut. I laid on the ground, helpless as a red shirt jumped on my bicycle and rode off. The sidekick launched a water balloon at me before running away, hitting me square in the crotch. When I looked toward the tunnel, the woman was gone. Somewhere in the depths, I heard a faint, gurgling growl. I jumped up and raced toward home. The trip would take even longer without my bike. My dad's car was standing guard in the driveway when I arrived. He pushed the door open before I even reached the steps. Where the hell were you, Carlos? He yelled, you think today was some kind of reward? That you could just run around town doing whatever you want? Dad, I'm sorry. Please, I need to tell you Isa. My god, did you piss in your pants again? Twice in one day? Dad, no. Somebody threw a water balloon and I? A water balloon? You thought you had permission to go have a water balloon fight in the middle of a school day? Get to your room now. Dad, there was a woe, now. I moped into my room and crawled under the blankets. I tossed and turned that night. Every creak of the floorboards and whistle of the wind caused my heart to race. At some point, the sweet release of sleep rescued me. I could hear the other kids whispering and giggling behind my back at school the next day. I flinched every time I rounded a corner. Hearing the final bell ring felt like a weight being lifted off my shoulders. I stepped out of school, planning to take a long way home when Marlena approached me. Hey Carlos, she said, I'm sorry I laughed at you the other day. I was just trying to fit in. She started walking toward the playground. Oh, uh, it's okay, I guess. I began to follow without realizing it. You know, Charlotte's not all that bad when you get to know her. She was just having fun. She started walking quicker. Um, she kind of is. She's been bullying me since the second grade. I matched her pace. Well, either way, she came to an abrupt stop and turned to face me, I wanted to thank you for sticking up for me. She slowly began leaning her face toward mine. My heart started banging in my chest. She inched closer, eyes closed. I gradually leaned back. Closed my eyes. Our lips were nearly touching and then... Ew. Charlotte's voice shot through the air like a bullet. I told you he'd come if you told him to. PP boy has a crush on you. She laughed. Marlena stepped away, covered her mouth, and giggled. I opened my eyes and realized we were mere feet from the tunnel. You really thought she was going to kiss you, didn't you? Charlotte laughed, I found another dog turd, this one is just for you. Marlena and another girl grabbed me by the arms and held me in place as Charlotte moved toward me with a wet mess in her bare hands. Bring them to me. The voice sounded more potent now, more explicit than ever. I didn't hesitate this time. I swung my head to the side and cracked Marlena in the nose, then pushed Charlotte's hand into her face. Ugh. She screamed, get him. I sprinted into the tunnel, the girls chasing not far behind. I was never the fastest runner in the class. Not by a long shot, but the tunnel wasn't very long. I pushed myself forward with everything I had, but every one of their strides equaled two of mine. I could feel them gaining on me. My lungs began to burn. I felt one of them graze the back of my shirt. I was almost at the exit. A hand pushed me by the shoulder, sending me crashing to the ground face first. I bundled into the fetal position and covered my face instinctively, bracing myself, and then... Nothing. I opened my eyes to see that I was lying in the field, a few feet outside the exit. I stood and faced the tunnel, but it was empty. No Charlotte. No Marlena. Not even the grey woman. I was brought in for questioning by the police since I was the last person who saw the girls before they disappeared. I told them that we were playing a game. The girls were hiding, I was seeking. I told them the last place I saw the girls was the tunnel. The department closed the school and scoured the shaft. They found a single set of bones buried inside, my mother's. They still don't have any leads on who killed her or buried her there, but I think I have an idea. The school opened for summer classes today to make up for lost time. When my dad came to pick me up, hello, guttural growl poured from the tunnel. Bring him to me.